So in our previous video, we talked about to list and its importance. Whenever you are getting data back from the database, 90% of the time you are going to do so in the form of a list. That is one reason why to list is very important. To list is also very important because it is what generates the SQL and pretty much fires the SQL gun at the database to get data back. You see, whenever you get data from a database, it's not doing so through magic. It's actually generating SQL and calling to list is what fires the SQL mechanism, gets the data and brings it back. But once you fire the metaphorical SQL to list gun, that's pretty much it. You've got your data, it's generated the SQL, everything is over with, but how do you defer this? Maybe you want to filter. Maybe you want to limit. Maybe you want to add more link commands to your stock or your entity framework mechanism. This is where as queryable comes in. As queryable is going to delay the firing of the SQL gun. So you can do things like filter. You can do things like limit. And after you get done building your SQL query and fine tuning the actual data that you want back from the database, that's when you can fire the to list, send your data to, or send your SQL to the database and get the data back in a more filtered, concentrated form. But this is what we're going to use when we do the actual filtering for our API. So let's go ahead, let's hop over into VS Code and let's do some filtering. So we are inside of our stock controller. We don't really need filtering for our comments. We need filtering for our stocks. And the reason why we need filtering is because you want to be able to filter by the name. Sometimes people call it a search. Sometimes people call it a filter. But either way, we need to be able to get all of these stocks by a particular name. And the way that we're going to do that, there's many ways that you can go about this. But one of the best ways is to create an object so that we can just insert this object right here, just like this, so query object. And we'll call this the query. And we are going to get this from query. And this from query annotation is going to allow us to insert query parameters. So the next thing is that when we actually search, this is the way that we want to do it. We don't want to pass in through the route. We want to pass in through query parameters and query parameters look like this. If you've ever used um, Google search, you will see query parameters use and query parameters are a way to pass in key value pairs using this right here. So we're going to have one query parameter for symbol. We're going to have one query parameter for the company name. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So query, we're going to create this object called a query object and there's no real place to put this. So what I'm going to do is just make another folder folder. I'm going to call this helpers and I'm going to call this the query object. And I think I accidentally made an interface. I want to create a class. So query object. And the way that we're going to do these key value pairs is we're going to create a property called symbol and we're going to create a property called company name and we're going to put them within the query object. So first one's going to be prop. We're going to be passing a string. It can be optional and it's going to be a symbol. Then also we're going to make this null right here. We're going to go prop string and we're going to say company name and we're going to give this a null looking good all right so now what we need to do is we need to number one bring this in right here and now what's going to happen is that we can pass in our query params through this query object and instead of having it passed in individually we could put the company name and we could put the symbol directly into here, but with a query object, it'll be wrapped in a nice little object and it'll just be one parameter that we pass in. Okay, so next thing is that we need to redo the get all async. The get all async doesn't actually pass in anything and we need the ability to be able to pass in our query just like this. And 
The way that we're going to do that is we are going to modify our actual interface. So I'm gonna go into the interface right here. We're gonna go into our stock and instead of passing in nothing, we are going to pass in the query object. And we're gonna call this query. Okay, now what we need to do is go into our stock repository and we're gonna go ahead and fix this. So instead of uh, control dotting, instead of using control dot, you probably don't want to because it's going to create another get all async. We're just gonna go ahead and add it into here just like this. So we're gonna say query object and we're gonna pass in the query. Okay, so as you probably guess, we have to use our as queryable. And instead of having the to list async, what we're gonna do is we can probably just get, uh, no, actually let's not do that. Let's do as queryable. So we're gonna make this as queryable. Then go ahead, pass that. And because we are no longer returning right here, what we're going to do is we're going to say var stocks is equal to await. And we're going to go down. Then we're going to get rid of this await because it's no longer async. And here's where we're going to chain on logic. So now that we have as queryable, we can add more logic to our actual uh, database query. So we're going to go is nor white space and we're going to pass in the value that we get back from our query. And it can be company name. And you could, you could add more here if you want to, but I'm just going to have the company name and the symbol. That's another reason that I chose to do an object is because you can add stuff to it later. But just for right now, we'll just have the company name and we'll have the symbol. So company name is equal to contains. So contains is going to do a search and we're going to search for the company name. Okay, that's looking good. Then we're going to go down here. We're going to do the symbol. So we're going to go is string is null or white space. So is null or white space. And we're going to pass in our query dot symbol. And we'll go down here. We're going to just add some more additional logic. So what it's going to do is it's going to check the actual object and when we pass in this query right here, it's going to pass in the uh, values that we pass in through the actual query params, just like this. And what's going to happen is it's going to go inside our actual uh, logic right here, and it's going to check and see if there's actually anything inside of it. So we're gonna go where, and all where is doing is filtering. So s dot symbol, contains is equal to query. Okay, that looks good. Then we're gonna go down here and this is where we're going to actually execute our await. So we're gonna say await stocks. We're gonna say to list async. Okay. And I think we are looking good. So let me make sure that the controller looks good. And I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna do a quick cold restart. We're gonna go dot net, dot net watch run. And I'm going to go into Swagger. Let's check and see. So make sure that we can execute and return the whole entire list. And let's return Microsoft. So we'll go here. We'll say Microsoft. And we get Microsoft back. And let's go back and let's we'll search for Tesla. So we'll say Tesla. And we also get Tesla as back as well, too. So we can now search by the company name and the symbol. So we are correctly uh so we are correctly filtering through the, our API. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.